My name is Swanand Devdhar. I am a faculty member in the Information Systems area at Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. In this video, I will be talking about qualitative research methods, specifically the process of coding text data. For the demonstration purposes, I will be using Atlas TI software application. You can choose any other qualitative data analysis software of your choice. Before I begin, I want to state that this video only serves as an introductory resource to the qualitative data analysis. For any additional insights regarding the content that I am presenting here, I encourage viewers to seek resources both in the forms of online video and published literature. Some of the classic resources include Glacier and Strauss's Discovery of Grounded Theory and Corbin and Strauss's Basics of Qualitative Research, Techniques and Procedures for Developing Grounded Theory. In this video, I will be covering three specific activities. First, we will see how to code a text document. This phase is also called open coding. Second, we will consolidate the resulting codes using code groups or code families. And finally, we will see how to conduct axial coding. Now, before proceeding further, it may be useful to have some background on coding. The idea of coding qualitative data to generate theoretical insights was proposed by two American sociologists, Glacier and Strauss, in the 60s. They termed the process as grounded theory, of which coding is one part. Over the years, researchers have used their approach in a variety of domains such as psychology, public health, sociology, and of course, management. Broadly, there are two ways of coding text data. There is the inductive approach in which the researcher works purely with the data from the field and does not enforce any theoretical templates as such. This approach involves going line by line identifying new ideas and themes. The other approach is closer to the deductive reasoning in which the initial coding structure is based on some prior exposure to the context or a theoretical framework. In this video, I will largely confine to the latter approach. The document that I will be analyzing is a transcript of a hypothetical interview created specifically for this video. The interview respondent is supposed to be a software developer who writes and manages part of an open source software project. Open source software projects are usually driven by communities of voluntary contributors. Some prominent examples of such projects include Apache Web Server, Eclipse IDE and Mozilla Firefox. By analyzing this hypothetical interview, we want to understand different facets of developers participation in an open source software project. This is the broad research objective that will guide our subsequent analysis. Note that the interview is only a representation. Any real interview conducted with a similar research objective may be longer and have more nuanced questions. You may also end up with multiple such transcripts because you will be invariably interviewing multiple respondents. Lastly, the choice of the domain is based on my area of interest and my experiences of interacting with open source software professionals over the years. Having said this background, let us proceed with the analysis of the interview. In Atlas TI, the first step is to create a project. I am going to name this project as QDA Video, but you are free to choose any other name. Having created the project, I am going to import the text document containing the interview transcript that is to be analyzed. Before starting the coding, however, it is usually a good practice to go over the whole document so as to get a general sense of what it entails. For example, in this document, I can see that the interviewer is talking about their initial activities as the software user, their prominent contributions and their current positions that of a module leader. The respondent is also talking about more general issues such as hierarchy in the project, selection of the leadership teams and the role of the community in software development. Having such broad understanding of the document is important because it may suggest main themes appearing in the document. Personally, I have found having the overall view of the text to be highly useful for coding. After getting an overall understanding of the content in the text document, we are going to proceed with the coding. The first step is open coding. Simply put, open coding attaches labels or short names to snippets of text. 
For instance, in response to the first question, the respondent talks about how they got introduced to open source software during an in-class activity. I am going to select this snippet of text and code it as in-class activity. In the same answer, the respondent is talking about the specific faculty who introduced them to the concept of open source. I am going to select this portion of the response and code it as faculty member. Now, in the right hand panel, you can see that the codes have started appearing as and when we are creating them. If you hover the cursor over these, you can even see the corresponding text snippets. Having created two codes, let us pause for a moment. What is our research objective? We are interested in understanding different facets of developers participation in an open source software project. What do the two codes which we have just created tell us about it? To me, it seems that the two codes relate to the specific circumstances under which the developer was introduced to the phenomena of open source software. In other words, the two codes represent the trigger that set the respondent onto their journey in the world of open source. Thus, one can argue that these two codes are related to each other as they are talking about similar things. Keep this important point about connection between codes in mind as we will come back to it later. Let us continue the open coding process. In response to the second question, the developer states that they made several suggestions about adding more features, but many went unattended. That prompted the developer to create these features on their own. The exact text that I am referring to is, some of them were addressed by those who managed the project, but many went unattended. I am going to select this snippet and code it as unmet feature needs. In the same answer, the respondent talks about their technical education. I am going to select just those two words and code them as formal training. So, with these examples, you can see how one can attach interpretations to different sections of text. As the coding progresses, one may wonder about the origins of the codes. Where do the codes come from? What is the source? I briefly touched upon this subject earlier when I described the ways of coding. I personally use the deductive approach to coding and therefore, for me, codes can come not only from my interpretation of what the respondent is saying, but also from my prior exposure to existing literature and the phenomenon. In fact, when working with the qualitative data, the researcher often brings forth their own traits, backgrounds, training, etc. I consider this as one of the most distinctive and powerful features of qualitative research. Moreover, there is enough evidence to suggest that in incorporating researchers' own traits and perceptions can provide rich theoretical insights. Having demonstrated how to code the snippets of text, I am going to load the same interview that I coded beforehand. As you can see, some codes appear in multiple places. For example, the text about being active on project forums as well as the text about attending offline meets with project users and other developers are both coded with visibility. Also, there are some snippets that have multiple codes. For instance, the snippet I often address the questions people ask in response to the question is coded with both activity in forums and information sharing. What do these two observations tell us? They tell us that a single code can appear multiple times in a document, which is what you would expect, but as well as a single text can be associated with multiple codes and have multiple interpretations underlying that text. This is how a typical text document will look like. This brings me to a very important point. Open coding is a highly iterative process. In the initial few iterations, you will find yourself changing the code structure considerably. These changes may include creating new codes, renaming existing codes and even merging some of the codes. So, the important point I want you to take away is that your eventual code structure may look different from the one you got after the first couple of iterations. The completely coded document is now the input for the next step, which is consolidation and grouping of codes. I am going to do so by creating code groups. A code group or a code family is a collection of individual codes that are in some way similar. To create a code group, open code group manager. Once you open it, you can see all the codes that we created in the form of a list in the lower panel. 
From this list, we select the codes that we want to group, drag and drop them in the upper panel and name the resulting group. As an example, I am going to use the two codes in class activity and faculty member, which we created right in the beginning. Why am I choosing these two codes? Well, as we saw earlier, these two codes may very well be connected because they capture the specific circumstances that introduce the respondent to open source software phenomena. To further underscore the similarity between these two codes, I am going to label the resulting code group as triggers. I am now going to refer you to the other code groups that I have already created. In addition to triggers, I have created four other groups. One of them is social status. This group combines codes perception of expertise and affiliation with the leaders. Let us look at the corresponding text snippets for these two codes and figure out their underlying connections. Perception of expertise code is attached to the text which says that in offline conferences of users and developers, a larger audience is expected when somebody who is in a leadership position is speaking. Affiliation with the leaders code is attached to the text which says that people want to be connected to the module leaders and members of the project core team. These codes are talking about the asymmetric importance afforded to those in the leadership positions in this particular project, indicating the higher status such members have in the community. Therefore, I have combined the two codes and named the resulting group as social status. I hope that these two examples of triggers and social status code groups clarify at least to some extent how similarities can be found between codes and code groups can be created. Needless to say, the exact nature of the similarities between codes is going to be highly contextual. Perhaps the most salient advantage of code groups is that they can act as a step towards abstraction from raw data. Remember that we started out with a text document which captured a developer's responses about participating in an open source software project. From there, we have now identified several codes and a smaller set of code groups such as norms, structure, social status, triggers and motivation. Thus, you can see how more abstract concepts are slowly emerging from the raw interview transcript. Let us now get into the final step of the video, which is called an axial coding. The process is well described in several resources on grounded theory, including in Corbin and Strauss's classic book on basics of qualitative research. Axial coding, as the name suggests, connects codes to reveal the underlying relationships. Several such relationships are possible, including hierarchical, causal, contradictory and so on. Why are these relationships important? They are important because the larger objective of this whole exercise is to discover new theoretical insights. So our end goal is likely to conform to these important characteristics of a theory. One such feature is the relationships. Thus, it is imperative that our qualitative data analysis includes a step for identifying and explaining the relationships between the codes. Axial coding is a popular way of doing that. Let us see how actual coding may work in our case. For this, we use the network feature of Atlas TI. We create the new network and import all the code groups we just created. For each code group, we also import all its constituent codes. So in one single window, we can observe all the code groups and their corresponding codes. For now, focus on the code visibility which is grouped under norms and perception of expertise which is grouped under social status. Visibility as a norm suggests that community members activities and contributions need to be highly visible. While the code perception of expertise indicates that some members of the community are perceived to have greater expertise than others. So, one argument is that as developers' contributions such as answering queries on the forums and developing new features become more visible, others may perceive them as experts. In other words, higher visibility for one's activity may enhance the perception of that person's expertise. 
using this reasoning, I am going to create an association link between the two codes. Similarly, look at the codes unmet feature and self drive. One can suggest that because the developer needed many of the missing features for effectively using the software, unmet feature needs may have contributed to the developer's self drive. Hence, I am going to connect these two codes with an association relationship. In this fashion, you can go ahead and create additional links. In these examples, the important point to note is the tight coupling between the relationships and the explanation. Researchers usually detail the explanations using memos or comments. For instance, here is how a memo for the relationship between visibility and perception of expertise may look like. Note that much like open coding, actual coding is also iterative. So over time, you will create new relationships, modify the existing ones, add or edit explanations in the memos and so on. In sum, if you jointly view the three steps that is open coding, code groups and actual coding, they give a glimpse into how the researcher systematically progresses from raw qualitative data to more abstract codes and relationships. As the closing statement, let me give my personal take on some of the common questions related to coding text data. Perhaps the most normally asked question is whether the codes that you are creating are correct. I consider this question to be void because there are no correct codes. As I said earlier, the coding process is subjective and therefore the codes one person creates may differ from what another person creates. So you should not waste time looking for correct codes. Another question that gets regularly asked is how many codes should I correct or create? Once again, there is no clear answer. Because coding is an iterative process, I am usually a bit liberal in creating codes in the early iterations of open coding. But over time, the codes will get consolidated as the researcher arrives at a more manageable number. Finally, one may ask what should I code? Can a word be coded or does it have to be a sentence? How about a collection of sentences? Without getting into the long-standing debates about this issue among qualitative researchers, I must once again say that there is no clear rule. Researchers may have their own preferences. Personally, I am more interested in the overall meaning and rarely go to the level of coding every line. In conclusion, I wish to say that the coding has emerged as arguably the chief technique of qualitative data analysis. In this video, my objective was to give you a brief summary of this technique. As I said at the start, there are several nuances to what I have presented here. However, I hope this very primitive introduction will encourage you to explore this area further in your specific research projects as and when appropriate. Thank you.